Christmas is all about giving. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen? The reason He did this was because of grace. You will never understand the Bible unless you understand that the Bible is a story about grace. Grace is simply God giving to us what we don't deserve. God created this world, but He didn't have to. God created you, but He didn't have to. God sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross, but He didn't have to. He didn't have to do any of this. God offers every person an opportunity to receive eternal life and go to heaven. But He didn't have to do that. Amen? That's right. He didn't have to do these things. That's what grace is all about. He gave it to you, even though you don't deserve it. And it brought joy to God's heart to give you grace. It's all about grace. Grace gives. Amen? God wants us to know His grace this morning. He wants us to uh, embrace His grace, love His grace, receive His grace, give His grace. Amen? Verse 1 of our chapter says, Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Hallelujah. There was something special about this Macedonian church. They knew the grace of God, and uh, they just didn't know about the grace of God. They knew the grace of God. And Paul knew that they knew the grace of God. How did Paul know that they knew the grace of God? Well, verse 2 says that in, in a great trial of affliction and a, an abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abound in riches of their liberality. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wrote that word down. I still can't say it. I looked it at the dictionary where it breaks it down. I still can't. That right there. Amen? Macedonia. Macedonia. I like Macedonia. I do that, you guys know that. Amen? If I don't understand the word and how to say it, I'll say it my own. <laughs> well, anyway, Paul knew that they knew the joy and the grace of God because in their poverty and in their in the, in, in, in their affliction. They show the grace of God. Amen. Even someone that really knows the grace of God, other people can see it. People that have the grace of God, other people will be able to see it. Amen. Because you'll have gladness, you'll have joy, you'll have love. Amen. And, and, and then you'll have some giving. Because grace gives. That's the title of our message. Grace brings gladness. And these people from Macedonia were under great affliction. They were under tremendous persecution. And they were dirt poor. But yet they were full of joy and of love and of gladness and of giving. Amen. Did you know that you can be financially rich and still be spiritually poor? Bob Marley said this. Some people are so poor that all they have is money. That's cool. That's right. There was this person named J. Paul Getty. When he was the richest man in the world at the time. And he died the richest man in the world. He had jets. He had houses. He had real estate. He had more money than he could spend in a hundred lifetimes. Paul Getty said once, if you can actually count your money, you are not rich. When he died, he literally had no idea how much he was worth. This man died the richest man with the most toys. But he was not glad and he was not full of joy. He once said this, I am the most miserable man in the world. That is proof that you could be financially rich and still be spiritually poor. Amen? 
But you can be also financially poor and be spiritually rich. Like these Macedonians, they were rich. Their bank account had nothing in it. Amen. It was empty, but their joy account was full. That's right. These Macedonians knew the grace of God. They had gladness in their heart. And that was a sign that they knew the grace of God. And that was a sign to Paul that they had the real thing because of the grace of God that was coming up off of them. Amen? A lot of people say they have the grace of God and they have the love of God. But man, you know? You know what I mean? say more, it's like, man. They said that the good man brings out the good treasure that's stored up in his heart. And an evil man will bring up evil treasure in their heart. The Bible says you would know them by what they say. If they really got the real deal. Amen? Amen. So if you open up your heart and you can say sweet words, you can say the right words, but your heart will also bring out something along with those words. I can say I love you, girl, and all that, but what's with it when I say it? Is it hate, anger, madness? You can say all the right words, but it's in your tone and how you say it and what's it, what's it come with, amen? Yeah. So just because you say you love God and you've got the grace of God, can other people see it like Paul was seeing these people that they had the real deal? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Another sign that they knew God's grace was not just in their gladness, but it was also in their giving. Grace gives. You can tell how close you are to God by how much you enjoy helping other people, giving to other people, amen? amen? That's right. When God gave His grace, He enjoyed it. And it wasn't a nice thing when He gave it. He gave His Son. Amen? amen. The Bible says in uh, Isaiah... 53.10 It pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to plead to bruise Jesus because he was giving grace to us. Amen. He knew that by giving Jesus he would be able to save us. He wasn't happy what Jesus had to go through, but he was pleased at the result it would bring people to salvation. Amen. Amen. So it pleased God to bruise his son, which means it pleased him to give. Amen? Something that he loved, his only begotten son. Hallelujah. God wants us to know his grace this morning. God wants us to show his grace. The word again? Liberality. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Liberality means <laughs> it means the quality of uh, of or giving or spending freely. Liberality means spending and giving freely. That's the word, the word means. These people that were under persecution and they were deeply in poverty and the word for poverty is in the Bible known as beggar or, or nothing to hope for or nothing coming your way. Amen. And they were in this state of mind. They were in this situation where they were poor, had nothing really to give, but yet they found a way to give. Amen. They had trials, they had tribulations, with very little, it was a bad time for them to give. It was a bad time to pull an offering, amen? Mm -hmm. The stock market was down, the economy was no good, jobs were, were not found anywhere, gas prices were up, employment rate was growing, the church could have plenty of excuses why they couldn't give, amen? But these people didn't use hard times or, or any excuses not to give. They gave beyond their ability. Verse 3 says, For I bear witness of, that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Amen? 
these people, they gave what they were able to give and beyond. Now how can you give and give beyond what you are able? I heard a preacher say that, that when you give according to your ability, you're trusting in what you can do in yourself. According to your ability, you're giving what you can do. But they gave beyond, and, and, and the reason you could give beyond because you're not counting on your own ability. You're counting on God's ability to do it, amen? And that's how they were able to give beyond their normal, amen? When you give beyond your ability, you're depending on God. You're saying, God, I don't know really have it, but I'm going to give it to you. These people over here need some help. I'm going to give you. You know what I mean? Because God's going to help me. The Bible says that you shouldn't even worry about what you eat, what you drink, what you wear. He, he tells us that not to worry about yourself at any point. That's a hard thing to do, amen? Because we start calculating. It's not adding up, man. we got more bills than money. How how is not adding up? Amen? But he says, don't worry about what you wear. Don't worry about what you eat. Don't worry about your finances. Don't worry about your health. Don't worry about your clothes. We're not called to worry about ourselves because we've got a Heavenly Father who's going to take care of us if we just trust Him. Amen? Amen. We're called to take care of other people. To take care of other people's needs. And as we look out for other people and take care of other people's needs, God will take care of our needs. We're not even supposed to worry about what we're going to eat or nothing. Just worry about God's people and reaching them and helping them out. And this Christmas season is all about giving grace. Amen? Grace gives. The grace of God will move you from doing what you can by sight to what you can do through your faith. Amen? When you come to know God's grace... God expects you to show His grace. We are to be reservoirs, not dams. We're supposed to be rivers and not ponds. Too many Christians never show God's grace. Amen? And they never share God's grace. And that's why so many Christians never see God's grace. They never show it. They never don't have it. That's what we got to do. Because grace gives. So how can God do, how can you show God's grace? When God's grace flows in your life, giving flows out of your life. When you see life through God's grace, you'll realize that giving is better than getting. And that's what makes life worth living, amen? God is all about giving. So let me tell you a story. The most difficult finance, financial time in this country that has uh, ever happened in this country was the Great Depression. In, 19, in the 1930s, there was a wealthy man who lost everything he had. Now, while he was rich, he was known to be a generous man and gave unbelievably. He was generous to the Lord's work. When he lost all, when the economy fell, he lost everything he had. Someone asked him, don't you wish you could have all that money back that you gave away? And the man said, absolutely not. In fact, all I have left is what I have given away. And what I have given away, I have forever. This man was storing up treasures in heaven. Every, the only thing he had when he, he said when he's going to leave this world was the things he gave away. Amen. That's right. Matthew 6, 20 to 21 says, But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moss nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God wants us to lay up for ourselves treasure in heaven. And the way you do that is by giving. I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about giving grace giving love, amen, care for somebody, help them out if you can, share your meals, like that story, I like to see it, a, a little cartoon of Mickey Mouse with Scrooge, it had one little bean, 
and he sliced it. Yeah. He shares it with his family. Amen. Amen. That's a that's a small example, but you know what I'm saying. We share even if we got a little bit with the next person. God will multiply it in our stomach. That's right, brothers and sisters. God wants us to lay up treasures in heaven. God wants us to be givers. God wants us to show His grace. God wants us to grow in grace. God wants us to give His grace. Hallelujah. God gives you His grace so that you can turn and give it to somebody else. Psalms 84, 11 says, For the Lord is, the, is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen. Acts 4.33 and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Amen. When he start proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus and proclaiming it and witnessing, he said that great grace came upon them, and they were able to reach people with that grace. That's how you reach people. It ain't going to come if you're convicting and slamming them. They're going to come people that love him. That's why they love Jesus. He didn't do what they did, but he sat with them. And they listened to him. They followed him. It wasn't because he compromised with them or, 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 or did what they did. It's because they knew that he cared for them. Amen? That's right. God wants to give his grace to you. God wants us to grow in that grace. Verse 4 says, He uh, I started to go back. They were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. They actually were begging Paul to let them give. They insisted that Paul take the gift that they were given. Paul was trying to talk them out of it. Say, well, you don't need to give because he understood they were being persecuted. He understood that they were poor, that they were in poverty. And he's trying to excuse them from giving. But these guys knew grace. They're like, no, man, we're not going to let you stop us from giving. They knew what it meant. And they're like, no, we want part of it. We don't have much, but we're going to give. Because we want to be part of this. Giving is a thing of grace. And they knew it. And they would they didn't want Paul to stop them from being part of this. They said, I gotta give it. I gotta put it in there. It's important. God wants it. This is what God wants. He'll take care of me. And they gave in grace. Amen. Amen. They were begging Paul to give. Well, Macedonians wanted to, to get in on the offering. They begged to put the offering in, but this was still not the max or the climax of the story. Paul had really not expected a financial response, but they went beyond what Paul wanted, and they gave what they knew God wanted. They gave from the heart. It wasn't the size of the gift, it was the size of their heart. Amen. Like the story in the Bible where that lady puts two mites, everybody's putting in big money. And this lady puts two mites. And Jesus said, this lady gave more than all of you. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what? I dropped in a diamond in there. I dropped in some stones. I gave up some gold. And this lady just gives up two little mites, probably worth two pennies. And God says she gave more because that's all she had. And she gave it all. Mm -hmm. Like Mary with the alabaster block that cracked it over Jesus' head. And on her feet, she gave a whole year's wage, and that's all she had. But she gave her best. She understood. And men say we can't learn from women. There's lessons all over the Bible that women teach us. Amen. Some of the women in there were more faithful than some of the men. They had it. She's like, I'm giving this to the Lord. Men all we can give to the Lord. And, and then they think they're right because they can feed a lot of people. This Jesus said, leave her alone. She did the most important thing. Me. You're always going to have the poor. You're always going to have the sick. But you ain't always going to have me. And this woman understood. Some of the women there, like I said, they understood some stuff that the men did. Amen. 
I was stopped by a woman. I stayed on that subject a little bit longer. I was stopped by my grandma. My grandma brought me a baby. She taught me about Jesus. There was no man in my family that stepped up and tried to show me. They tried to show me how to be a man in the worldly way, you know what I mean? But my grandma, she understood. She was the only one in my family that had it right. And I learned to love Jesus and follow Jesus and be saved by Jesus through a woman. Amen. Amen. Verse 5 says, And not only as we hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then they will the, uh, and then to us by the will of God. Now this is growing in grace. They gave themselves to God and then they gave themselves to the apostles. Which means they gave themselves over to the work of the Lord. Not to them bossing them around. They gave themselves to the work that Paul and the apostles were doing. They gave themselves to the Lord and then to the ministry. God doesn't want anything you have. He wants you. He wants all you are, not what you have. He gave us what we have. We have it because of Him. And He just wants us to learn how to be grateful and learn how to give. The more we give, the more we have. The world looks at it different. The more we give, the less we have. But in God's economy, the more we give, the more we have. And then you don't have to struggle as much to get it. He'll pour in your bosom a blessing you can't contain. And that blessing, when we start getting that idea that grace is all about giving, and God knows that He can trust you with that, He'll pour into your bosom a blessing you can't contain. Because He knows that you're not going to hoard it or keep it or buy yourself things that you don't need. He knows that you're going to share it. And when you get to that point, then God will start giving. I'm early learning how to give him. And then a little more starts coming. Sometimes I don't even know where I'm getting it from. So my daughter the other day goes, Dad, it works. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't know where she got a check in the mail for a hundred and some dollars, you know. She didn't have no money and she'd been giving. And she was amazed. And I was like, man, that's good. That's good. And then she's getting it. And we all need to grow. And we all need to give. And we all need. And God's God, amen, not to what I say or what I tell you you should give or what program. I'm not here to ask for anything. When the blessing comes around and I tell brother the blessing, that's an opportunity for you to sow some seed. Amen. You don't have to sow it here, but I believe you should sow it somewhere. I prefer you do it here, hallelujah. But it doesn't have to. I feel like you need to sow that 10% somewhere to a ministry that you believe in and trust in. And some you should give it. You should sow it somewhere. Amen. And a uh, great Bible teacher once said, God is willing to make full take the full responsibility for the for your life that is totally surrendered to Him. When you surrender yourself totally to God and give everything up to Him, God will take full responsibility of the rest of your life. When you commit yourself to the business and commit yourself to meet someone else's need, God will commit himself to meeting your needs. When you give to God all that he really wants, which is yourself, God will give you all that you ever need. When you realize that, believe that, and live that, he be you begin to grow in grace. Amen. Amen. When we understand that. When you grow in grace, you will give grace. When you grow in grace, you will show that grace. And how do you show that grace? You need to be humble. James 4, 6, and I'll close with this. God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Before you grow in grace, before you give grace, before you show grace, you need to humble yourself and get that grace in a short sermon. I wish I had more time. But weeks go by real fast. And I was working on another one. But I didn't finish it. <laughs>